Hello nature lovers, Adam Barillet here of Crystal Connections. Again, we continue on our series of exploring different gifts from nature that we have for each of the star signs. Today we're looking at the beautiful, big-hearted Leos. Now, what you'll find is there's always a lot of information about different star signs and sometimes I just go, this one crystal or this one oil. Today I want to talk about how to level up the energy of the Leo star sign. So first of all, let's look at some different crystals. Now, what do we know about Leos? Well, first of all, we know that they're very big-hearted, they're symbolised by the lion, they're very gregarious, they're born leaders. You know, I often joke that a Leo won't show up for anything unless there's a spotlight and an opening ceremony type of thing. They like to be that centre of attention and they often feel rather comfortable there. Because of their big hearts, because of their fiery nature, they make good leaders, they make, they make people feel really comfortable, um, really kind of loved, um, and all that type of thing. But we do have to worry when that passion, they're very passionate sign, one of the, them and Scorpios, I would argue, might be the two most passionate signs. When they get overly passionate, they do have a bit of a short tempo, or they can be a little bit selfish. And so we're going to talk about things to do with that as well. So the first crystal that I love to recommend for Leos is Ruby. Now this is a big piece of raw Ruby, you don't need something this big, and you don't need to go to a jewellery shop and buy yourself a Ruby ring. Um, unless you can get someone to buy it for you, but you know, you can get little tumbled rubies for about $20. Rubies are this really fiery, power, powerful crystal that kings and queens and nobility have fought over for centuries. And so when we think of that Leo energy, which is very quite regal and noble in itself, Ruby really helps to bring that up. Remember, Leo is a fire sign, so it really resonates beautiful with that Leo. Uh, with that Leo energy. Now, a question I like to ask when people are drawn to Ruby or if Ruby comes up in my oracle card readings that I do for people, I always like to say, are you sitting in your throne or of someone else? And Ruby really helps you to sit in that throne and take control of your life, which is very much a Leo thing. Now, Rubies are, you know, everyone's heard of a Ruby, but if you want to go a little bit level up and bring that passion into a bit more of a spiritual context, one of my favourite crystals is called Tugtopite. That's right, Tugtopite. I'm not making it up, it's just a sound fancy. It's a really cool crystal. And when it comes out of the ground, it's just kind of black and white like that. But when you put it in the light or it's exposed to heat, bits of pink will flare up in it. Remember those hypercolour t-shirts? It's like a hypercolour t-shirt in, um, in a crystal. Hey Bridget, hello from New Zealand. Hello from Christchurch, hope you're well. So Tugtopite is really, really great for firing up all, all that kind of passion and bringing in that big hardness. And really, even though you can't see the pink, it keeps that fire within kind of thing. Just like the crystal always had that passion and that energy within it, helps Leos to bring that passion out. Now, being Leos and being leaders, we need to be able to express ourselves really well. Leos are great as well because they're able to... Um, to inspire people, and so, that, but they also have, a, because of that big heart, they're not too serious, they're not a stern sign necessarily. And so this is just a small piece, but this is blue opal. And opals have a real childlike, playful kind of nature. And so this helps Leos to communicate in a playful way. Leos do have to be a little bit wary because they can get a little bit demanding, or bossy, or aggressive. And to make sure that they say things in maybe a polite, maybe a considerate, maybe a bit more gentle op then this can be a really great crystal for them. So blue opal, especially Andean or Peruvian blue opal. It has this beautiful royal blue, or not royal, kind of an aqua blue colour. Now, talking about communication, communication is really, really important for that. Uh, hello, Denise, as well. Everyone's from New Zealand. I'm entertaining all of New Zealand today. <laughs> um, thank you for joining me. I really, really appreciate it. Um, now, speaking about Leos, communication is really, really important to them. And one of the things is Leos are really good at talking, but not always the best at listening. And so, hey Denise, how are you? Angelite is a crystal of listening. It encourages us to be a bit more peaceful, to stop and to listen to what other people are saying and to what they're truly saying and what they mean from their words. It's named Angelite because it allows us also to communicate with the higher realms when we shut up. We can hear the signs of the angels. We can see the signs of the angels because we don't learn anything when we're talking. Angelite is a really nice one when Leos are getting a bit dominating or a bit domineering. So these are some of my favourite crystals 
And these work on a really nice energetic level and to kind of compliment them or to work, not even compliment, to work in synastry, synastry, uh, synergy, I can't speak. <laughs> I need some blue crystals. Um, to work in synergy with the crystals are some essential oils. Now the astrological body that rules Leo is the sun. And so what we associate with sun are the citrus oils. So all of your citrus oils are great for Leos because they bring that joyousness and that pleasure. Leos also, you may notice one thing about Leos, is Leos will work very, very hard. But just like the lions, when they're finished hunting, what do they do? Oh, couldn't possibly work another minute. And uh, I must, <laughs> I'll confess, I know a little bit about Leos. I have a partner who's a Leo and for... You know, they'll work very, very hard, they're very big hard, they give a lot, but once their energy, once their battery is flat, they just can't find any more energy to go. I couldn't possibly work anymore, they say, and so they just really take it easy and that type of thing. But this is a really good thing as well. They, they work hard, but they also rest hard. And there are probably some other signs, you know, Capricorns maybe. I know as a Gemini, I'm always go, go, going. There's a few signs that work, 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 and don't allow that pleasure into their lives. So we can really bring that energy and that lesson from Leo into our lives, no matter what sign we are. But citrus oils really help us to bring that playful, leisure, relaxed energy in. So any oil, it can be grapefruit, orange, lemon, bergamot, lime, mandarin, tangerine, green mandarin, kumquat, um, yuzu, any of those are absolutely amazing to work with, um, or clementine, another one, um, are all fabulous to work with that Leo energy. You can even combine that with vanilla, absolute. And vanilla is absolutely amazing. L vanilla is all about pleasure and making sure that whatever we're doing, we're enjoying it. One of my favorite concoctions or blends that you can use for Leos is one of the doTERRA's blends. I call it Joy Bubbles in a Bottle, as do many others, and it's called Citrus Bliss. This is absolutely amazing for bringing in that Leo energy. I absolutely love it. So, now I want to talk a little bit about what happens when Leos get angry. Because when being such a fiery, um, big sign, when they get angry, it can, you know, it can get scary. So what happens is, um, I often, you know, explain them that what I believe is that passion and anger are exactly the same thing. They're both a very fired up, fiery energy. The only difference is, passion has an outlet and anger doesn't. Now when that happens, when a Leo gets angry and really fired up and frustrated at people or things like that, because I do have this tendency to, to act, they're always in action mode. And sometimes I can spit things out and without talk or yell without even thinking. To make sure that this anger is being channeled in positive direction, cardamom is really, really good. And my label, not that you need to read the label, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but cardamom is amazing. It really helps you to channel passion and fiery energy in the right place. So it's good for people that do have anger issues and Leos can get a little bit fired up like that lion sometimes, so this is really good. Cardamom's great to diffuse. It's also really great to add to smoothies. It helps with your digestion. So I'll um, pop a drop of cardamom when we're making smoothies in the morning and that really helps physically and kind of that spiritual and emotional realm as well. The other oil that's really good is black pepper. Black pepper is all about removing facades and removing masks that we play or that, that we show to the world and being a bit more authentic. Leos sometimes when they're out of balance can start to exaggerate or get selfish and get really upset when it's not all about them. If that happens, black pepper is really good. It helps you to go back into who you truly are and not be so selfish and inconsiderate. So you can basically work with either any of these crystals, any of these oils, maybe one I've been speaking about really resonates with you. And if you want to bring in an angelic energy, the angelic energy that you can bring in is Virtual. And Virtual is the angel of Leo, and he helps you to be that big hearted person, but also to allow time for pleasure, leisure, and intimacy as well, and tenderness. That's really much Virtual's energy. Virtual really resonates with the sun energy as well, which is ruled by Leo. Um, as well as, oh hi Victoria, how are you? Um, and uh, virtual really resonates with the crystal citrine. So if you want to connect with that Leo energy a bit more and, um, and virtual, then citrine is absolutely wonderful. Uh, mixing things like citrus bliss, citrus bliss is also really nice for helping you connect with um, the, the virtual energy as well. So, I want to let you in on a little secret. 
Although you have a star sign, which is your sun sign or your zodiac sign, did you know that each and every one of the 12 signs is in your birth chart? Now, some of them, the energy is quite high and it might be overactive and sometimes it's underactive and we can use crystals and oils to bring them into balance. So you're not just one sign, you're actually all 12 in different components. Now, how are you gonna learn about this? I would love you to join me in my Nature's Healers course. It's a six month course. It commences next Saturday, the 28th of April. And in that six month course, we go through a whole range of things. We look at working with crystals and essential oils, as well as angels, animals, and a whole lot of stuff. We go through each of the 12 signs, and I show you how to read your birth chart so that you can work out exactly what, what the balance of each sign is in your chart, and then work out which of nature's gifts you can use on different occasions to bring that in, uh, into balance. You may be a Capricorn, but maybe you have problems expressing yourself. So maybe we'll talk about the Leo energy that you need to up and bring in that Andean blue opal, just for example. Now with the six month course, we don't just look at astrology, we look at all the chakras and how to balance them. And I teach my unique 21 crystal chakra balancing system, how to test your own chakras using a pendulum, teach you basics like cleansing. We look at Lemurian healing, Atlantis, we look at mystical beings like unicorns, mermaids, and fairies and how to bring their energy in. Crystal grids, manifestation, and all different weird and wonderful things like that. In the six month course, you get an email each week and you can tackle that course and that content whenever you want. If you go on holidays, you can fall behind and that's all good, fine, and well as well. So I'm gonna leave a link in the comment section as soon as I finish talking, and I'd love you to uh, contact me and find out a little bit more about the course. And I'd love you to join me. We, this will be the third time I'm running it, and the last two groups have been absolutely amazing to work with, and I, I believe that they've taken a lot out of the course as well. So the journey continues. We're gonna continue talking about all the different star signs. Uh, tomorrow, we have a very nurturing and sometimes misunderstood sign, and that's Virgo. So join me tomorrow at 4 p.m. Australian Western Standard Time when we explore the next sign in our Zodiac series, Virgo.